Hello friends, Alan here with another Studio One quick tip and today we are talking about retrospective recording in Studio One and how to get the best of it. If you are new around here, please consider subscribing for more Studio One tips. I don't put them out on some artificial schedule, I just release them whenever I feel that I discovered something new in Studio One that is worth sharing, well at least in my opinion, so I will not spam you with a lot of useless videos. It will also help me with some extra motivation. And now let's dig in. Retrospective recording arrived in Studio One 5.1 and what it does is it's quietly recording whatever you play on your MIDI keyboard when you are not actually recording. Kind of like what your phone does. Just kidding. Or am I? So then, when you accidentally play something magical, you don't have to try to play it again. You can just pull it out of Studio One's memory and have your masterpiece ready. You do this by going to Track Inspector, as you can find uh, by pressing the I button here in the top left corner, uh, or you can press F4 on your keyboard. And then you have this retrospective recording line here and this gray button, which is gray until you play something. Once you play something, it turns red. And then when you click it, you get the things that you played spewed out into your track. And that would be it. But jamming on a stop track is not what you usually do. Most of the times you would have some uh, section or maybe even the whole song written down and then you just want to play some melody on top of some section. So let's try that. That wasn't great, but you get the idea. So now when you press the retrospective recording here, you get this hodgepodge of everything that you played over those three loops or whatever it took for us to, to play with. So that's not something that you want to get, right? Luckily, there are ways to work around it. So if you go to the record panel here that you can access through this gear, in the transport panel, you have this instrument loop record se uh, section. So if you switch it to record takes, it would actually, on each loop iteration, it would, uh, it would record a separate take. You can even go one step further and enable take layers on record mode. So this way, on each loop, it would create a new layer lane in your track. And then you will be able to comb the best possible combination of everything that you've played. So let's try that. So let's say that will do. Now we press the respective recording button and we get all of these takes here. So we can discard some of them if they were just flukes. Basically all of these weren't great, but let's say some of them are usable. And now you can even comp your best take out of this. So let's say we want this part from the last take and then we want this part from the first take. And now we have our perfect take, even though we weren't recording, we were just jamming. And that's my tip for today. If you like this video, please consider liking it, sharing it with your friend, and if you have other ways to improve retrospective recording or any comments on what I showed you here, please leave them down below. And if you haven't done it already, please consider subscribing to my channel. Ring the bell to get notified about my future tips. Thank you and see you next time.